For reasons yet to be determined, the bodies of the recently deceased are returning to life and attacking the living. The scope of this... Keith, are you there? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, how you doing? Oh, good. Okay, cool. So what do you got for us, Keith? Well, um... Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, we can hear you. Good. Right, um... Hang on, I've just got to mute something. Can I hear you on Skype? Yeah, just make sure you, uh, yeah, just, no, yeah, yeah, block, that's fine. yeah, yeah, just right. mute us on Black TV, I'm sorry. Okay, um, just to give you a bit on my background, <laughs> sure. uh, my background is I was an atheist till I was 22, um, and I studied engineering, so, and I've been a computer programmer since I was quite young, mm -hmm. so my background is basically software engineering, engineering, and my father was a physicist, so I'm quite familiar with how science works and how science thinks. Um, as an atheist, I stopped being an atheist when God spoke to me at the age of 22, and I was baptized a year later. All right, before you go so, on, let me stop you there uh -huh. real quick before you go on. How did God talk to you, and where were you in life? Were you in a good position in life? Were you at a low in your life? Or just give us a little more uh, detail on that um, issue when you talk to God. Well, i would met some Christians who were basically, in my view, pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and I basically spent two years asking them every awkward question I can in a way that you're probably all familiar with. Um, and I had read the book Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis, which proposed a logical... Uh, basis for a lot of stuff. So I prayed what I consider the atheist prayer. On a Thursday night I prayed, God if you're real I want to know. And four days later I heard the Lord speak to me and I was attending a church at the time. What did he say? Now, what did he say to you? If you want to he said, that. I'm innocent until proven guilty, Keith. Okay. Now, it's not just the words that I heard, they weren't audible, they were inside my own head. Mm -hmm. It's not just that that was important, it was the effect it had on me as a person. That instant changed me, and I've never looked back since. And this is something I've discovered, that whenever God speaks, it has a resultant measurable change. And that's something I've followed up and studied and collected case study information for years and years. So, following that time, um, I would say I've spent a number of years trying to help people in different ways. And more recently, the last 10 years, I've been looking at the subject of emotional healing. Mm -hmm. And working to analyse exactly the effect of trauma and, and things that happen to people and how they affect someone. So let's say someone has uh, suffers rape or abuse, but each specific event has a certain specific effect on that person. And then when you analyze that to find out exactly what the problem has been caused by whatever's happened to that person, you know exactly what needs to be fixed in order to help them. And when you know that information, this is the interesting bit you might find, when you pray, God provides two things. The first is if you pray saying, what's the problem, he will help you find the problem in that specific detail you need. And the second thing he'll help you when you pray is he will speak about that subject to that person directly, and the result will be that the issue is cured. All right, let me stop you there real quick. I'm sorry. Um... I mean, like, this is how I look at prayer. I think prayers are just laws of probability in nature or in reality. Right. I think I, that's how I look at it. So I'm, okay. not, I'm not I'm not sitting here trying to bash your beliefs or anything like that because that's what this show is about. We want people like you to come on. Right. Uh, so we can discuss this type of stuff. But let me finish real quick and I'll let negation mm -hmm. go and then you go back. But I, I think it's laws of probability. I think if you pray to a jug of milk, I think you're going to get the same outcome. This is just right. my own viewpoint, okay? True, so my own opinion. jugs of milk don't speak. Well, that's good. Um, but... <laughs> but so uh, let, let me give you an example, just to get, get your head around it, okay? Mm -hmm. I had a lodger, I've, I've given this example to people before, they've probably heard it before, if they've been in my show. I had a lodger who moved into my house, and he unpacked his belongings, came downstairs, and saw a pet bunny rabbit. And he ran out the door, and it turns out he has a, an extreme phobia of bunny rabbits, or small animals. Mm -hmm. So he announced to me that he definitely had to move out. 
Now, just to look at that situation in terms of trying to think of whether this is a subjective experience or an objective experience, mm -hmm. you can objectively measure his physiological response to seeing that bunny rabbit and say, yes, he has a fear mm -hmm. of bunny rabbits with a pretty high certainty, okay? Mm -hmm. So you can measure people's emotional reactions with some objectivity, okay? So then... I said, let's sit down and talk about this. And the first, would you be prepared to pray about it? So when I said that, we prayed about it, and I said the first prayer was simply, Lord Jesus, could you help him understand why he has this phobia? And he came up with two memories, no, one memory, in which when he was three years old, he was bitten by his gerbil. Um, now, I also asked him what emotions he felt when he ran away, and he said he felt fear and panic. So I now know I'm breaking the problem down, and I've broken the problem down into his emotional reaction of panic and his emotional reaction of fear. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for two causes, one for fear, one for panic. So when we get to the memory of him being bitten by his gerbil, I'm asking him, well, what was the thoughts that go through your mind? And he said, well, I see the blood spurting out my finger. And my instant thought was, that's just like the movies. I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. I said, well, how does it feel when you think the thought, I'm going to die? And he says, that's the, the cause of my panic. I'm going to die. So it's the thought, I'm going to die. Now, this thought is not his intellectual thought. It's his emotional reaction. Mm -hmm. So what's happening there is... But when he sees the rabbit, the subconscious emotional mind is doing a quick look up through all of his past experiences to see if there's anything that can inform him on this topic. Mm -hmm. It's finding a memory of the gerbil, small fluffy animal, and in that memory is panic and the belief I'm going to die. So as a 40 year old adult, he retrieves that memory and his reaction is panic. The panic is stored in the memories that are looked up subconsciously. Okay, let me stop you there, Keith, uh, because oh, you're going on a little now the rant. Fear, the no. fear Keith, is Keith. the belief. Keith, I'll Keith. just finish the story. The fear is the belief I'm going to get in trouble. So we've got two subjects. Now, when you pray, he report. I pray, Lord, okay, he believes these two things. One, I'm going to die, and two, I'm going to get in trouble. So when you pray and you have identified the problem, you leave it to him to report what he experiences. And I just record it and take notes. And this is what he reported. He reported hearing a voice in his own head that said, it's okay, you're a big boy now, you're not going to die. Okay? Yeah. And that resulted in a physiological change in which he no longer had the fear of rabbits and he was able to stay and not move out. Mm -hmm. Now that experience and those words that I recorded, that is repeatable. I can do it with anybody and have done every day for about 10 years. Okay. And I collect data and so on. So once it's repeatable, it's mm -hmm. studyable. And once it's studyable, you can analyze those words and see if God exists in those well, words. Well, then you go into the peer review article, scientific and stuff like that. But let, let me stop you there. Negation. I know you got a lot to say, so go ahead. I'll give you the floor. Well, I wanted to let Wet go first if, if he's got something because uh, no, I, I wanted to get into a little bit of a, a kind of a back and forth and I didn't want, uh, I don't want, it, it may take a little bit longer than what Wit's got. Go well, what, well, all he's basically described as far as I can tell is psychoanalysis and sure, yeah, I mean that's, you're just talking about psychology and, and what I wanted to ask is when you say God speaks, what exactly do you mean by that? Because a lot of people would say God speaks through, you know, yourself or other people mm -hmm. and and so but at the end you seem to suggest that it's a literal audible voice in their head and it, and I would just question is that not just a form of self assurance self reassurance you know it, it so mm -hmm. basically you've psychoanalyzed him it's yeah. you've just done you've just done psychology and then he, <laughs> he he finds the problem that causes that psychological reaction and then yeah. he he reassures himself i don't yeah, see well, where god enters in to any of that Right. Now, the thing is, that's a simple scenario, okay? Um, these interactions in which God speaks can be much more complex. My, rec my record is someone hearing and reporting God speaking to them for 90 minutes, non-stop. From my point of view, the rules are you don't suggest anything. 
you don't suggest any subject matter, mm -hmm. you can sit and pray with someone and say these words every three minutes for two hours. Lord Jesus, what do you want them to know next? If you pray that every three minutes for two hours and they report what they see, feel, hear, remember, whatever, then they will go on a process of understanding themselves and in the end they will hear Jesus speak to them about something. Now, that's just what I described. Hmm? It's introspection. It is introspection, but it's led by God because he takes you to the specific place you want to go. And there's lots of interesting stuff where it gets you, more complicated. How do you distinguish between you taking yourself there and God doing it? Mm -hmm. How do you make that uh, distinction? In the initial stages, it's difficult to do that because it's just the person going on a journey through their own thoughts and feelings. For most people, it's not obvious until later, until you've got it all out. It's not obvious until later that God's saying stuff. Um, just on a slightly different angle, um, I've written some of this up in a sense that if you're looking for God who is love, then you need a detector that's capable of detecting that. So you'd look for people who feel unloved, for example, and see if praying for them makes any change and how that change takes place. Well, there's also um, actually a lot of scientific studies out there that this proves that if you pray for somebody, that if you didn't pray for them, the probability was higher that they would live, especially through heart conditions. So negation, really quick. Yeah, I know you got to go into okay. something. Are you so. talking about heart conditions? Well, there's a specific detail. I mean, I work in an well, old people. Uh, home and I'm hold on, hold on. I, I, don't, I don't mean to step on you, but I, I think I can get around this. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of amazing, um, in fact, to the point where I could be swayed that God has spoken to you to call in this show because I literally have a phobia. Right. Um, so I'm willing to, uh, you said this is testable and repeatable. Mm -hmm. um, what do we need to do? In fact, I'll be willing to test it on air right now if you want to. Oh, that's interesting. Um, let me see. Uh, first of all, who am I talking to? Uh, no, this, is this is negation of people. I'll see who's flashing. Right, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Um, I'd rather not do it right now, but I would be willing to do it at some point, definitely. Um, I mean, I do live healings on my blog show all the time, so um, I'm not kind of in the zone at the moment. But, yeah, I think we should go for it at some point. Um, I, I like to explain things to people so they kind of understand what, what they're getting into and what, um, perhaps show some examples and so on. Um, but yeah, I'll be up for that. Uh, when when would you like to do it? I I have no problem setting that up. Um, mm. Any time. Yeah, good question. Uh, Send your questions. Negation of pain. Yeah, I'm just thinking. I mean, it's three o'clock in the morning. So, uh, oh yes, Mark's in the call. Um, yeah. <clears throat> um, let me let me add you on Skype, and we'll talk in the next uh, couple of days. How about that? Yeah, please do. That'd be great. Cool. All right. Um, just to expand on where I've come with this is that over 10 years, 10 years ago, I started working with rape victims. And there's certain common things that happen with rape victims and, and what happens in their healing process. And then things got, in my life, things got more and more difficult and more complicated. And I've got to the point where um, I... I'm working with people with multiple personality disorder. And when you analyze the issues behind that, you've got one person who hasn't just got one phobia or one issue, you're talking about thousands. And so, for example, I've witnessed one person being healed of 103 different, not different phobias, but 103 phobias. Because they had multiple personalities, sometimes different personalities had the same phobia, so there's some overlap there. Um, sometimes different personalities have the same phobia, so there's some overlap. Yeah, he'll take care of it. You got it. Cool. Yeah, sorry. Um, it shouldn't be allowed to work in that field, right? Well, um, a lot of the people that come to me in the early days were sort of in their middle ages and they tried everything else. And so when I learned, the people I learned on were actually qualified counselors, people who had trained in this. And so they came to me and we worked through stuff together as a mutual learning experience. 
and this this works this for me is how I operate I work with people as, as a sort of I'm not the expert on them they are so I'm merely a facilitator so I tend to like to build up a relationship with the people that I'm working with and so I tend to work with my friends um, mainly or I do do a bit on the internet to show off so um, I don't think your record will be better because um, once someone's got the hang of hearing from God and the hang of this working we do see pretty much a hundred percent success rate with women Guys are a little bit more difficult. Hundred percent success rate. Uh, could could once I get one? Got, hang, yeah, go once ahead. they've seen it work once or twice. Go ahead, um, negation. Just real quick, um, as far as qualifications, we'll have you been trained at all, or is this just a gift, or how did that work? Um, well, twelve years ago, I was helping, trying to help various people, and it hadn't gone well. I'd helped a girl out of a satanic cult. And she went back into that cult, and it didn't go well. Um, so I was at the end of my tether. And for some reason, uh, another friend of mine was having flashbacks. So for some reason, I googled some random combination of flashbacks and Satanism and so on. And so um, I... Keith, I, I really can't. I can't. Re I Keith, Keith, course, Keith, I the can't. Course I did taught me this stuff. Keith, 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 I can't really take you serious right now. What you're saying right now, I'm not trying to offend you or anything, but I really can't take what you're saying serious. I, I don't know. Who's who's saying that? It's me. The, I run the show. Okay. Live Life Eight Zero Seven Two. Uh, Matt, you got anything to say? Because you just came in. He's our second caller. You got anything from uh, Keith here, real quick? Uh, I have a quick question sure. for him. Um, uh, hypothetically, Keith, if if I told you that God spoke to me, yeah, and I, I believe that one hundred percent, yeah, I would. And what <laughs> if, if God told me that He didn't know um, what you're talking about? That that mm -hmm. it, you are just you're, you're lying and sinning, well, um, breaking the yeah. ninth commandment. How would you uh, prove that what you're saying is true? Okay. Um, I can't prove it except through demonstrating and videos and examples and so on. Um, what I am saying is that these things can be studied. You can study things object. You can. Oh, what I'm suggesting is that if you're going to design an experiment to detect God, you need to design to find a detector that's appropriate to what you're looking for. And I've looked at this and. And it is possible to look and use people and their emotions as a detector, and you can study this objectively. So if you okay, so if you can study room, it objectively, can you get that peer reviewed? I'd love to. I'm just not. I'm not in a position to do that myself because I'm a full-time carer for someone with multiple personality disorder, and I have been for ten years. It's kind of intense. Um, that person is making a full recovery, and, but unfortunately a lot of what I do at home in my home environment is subject to confidentiality, so I have to find other avenues to, to find material that can be used as case study material. I've got quite a lot in raw video, raw video and audio, but writing it up is, takes ages. Um, so do you think that what, what proof you have of God is not possibly the most important thing to anyone anywhere? Well, it is, but obviously I've got to pay the bills and so on, so that, that, that unfortunately takes priority. What I can do is I can give some examples of more interesting scenarios. Um, well, one second, Keith, is, mm -hmm. could, could I just jump in real quick? Um, and also, I've got quite a lot of experience of spirits as well, in case you were okay. talking about that earlier. Well, no, 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 you, you were mentioning money. Um, you do mm -hmm. realize that there's a million dollars on the table, literally, for anyone who could demonstrate what you're doing. I think that would that would quell any of your um, concerns over monetary um, issues. Yes, I know about that. Um, <laughs> up until recently, maybe a year ago, the rules excluded this, but I think Randy did change the rules. Um, so, I know it's there, but... Okay, if you could put it another me, way, uh, one put it another way. for how when I could find out... Mm -hmm. Because what I said, obviously, what I said before about me talking to God isn't true. 
So I'm, I'm atheist. Right. What I would like to know is what what do you suggest I do? What do you suggest I do to actually get a response from God? Because all of the hundreds right. of times that I've ever tried to get him to respond, yeah. um, I have never had any answer. Okay. So what what is the magic word to say that actually gets a response? Okay, mm. the magic. Well, the principle is that he needs something, a context, to talk about. And that context will be, needs to be, to be honest, to, needs to be something emotional. So the best place to encounter God is in the place that hurts the most. Because that's the place you need it most. Well, look, in order to distinguish that these effects are not being caused by the patient, as opposed to being mm -hmm. caused by God, you need to set up a control group. So you could probably set up an atheist... Um, doing the same thing, and then you could perhaps try to isolate that variable and yeah. then show that it's not just simply the patient, that it is an actual effect of God, you know. My, that's what you, it doesn't seem like you What know. do you think of this? If, if, I've, if I've worked with someone who says to me, they've tried this, they've tried that, and they've tried the other, and it hasn't worked, does that no, fulfill no, the role? The problem is that problem. people have tried exactly what you're saying, and it, n at no point do they say God was involved. And so you've made no way to distinguish the one case from the other. You have to set up a, a some way to isolate that variable that you're you're wanting to say is the actual cause. Um. Otherwise, you, you you there's no distinction made. You can yeah. you can call God. Quite seeing the see my proposed control group will be someone who's tried everything else and it hasn't worked. That's the like control. Me. Yeah. Exactly. Then that's what that's what I'm not understanding is, if you would just pray for me right now, and yeah. I heard God, it would be yeah, a cool. fairly definitive proof because mm -hmm. everyone knows my belief system here, and you know yeah. I'm in a nice quiet place. I have no distractions. Um, mm -hmm. If God wants to talk to me. Um, you know, I, I think I'm the perfect control here. You mm -hmm. have the perfect opportunity to demonstrate to a hundred and some odd people, not to mention what would happen if this actually hit YouTube and I, and I, you know, okay. I, I, I um, experienced it. I think that would be very, very powerful for not only you, but Christianity across the board. Right. Okay. Uh, yo, uh, Keith, what, uh, what's your there website? There is a question I still have in my mind. Real quick, what's phone. your what's your website? Um, I have a number, the safeprayer.com mm -hmm. is one of the websites, and I've got a blog channel on Keith One Y. Uh, is it free for you to do your healing sessions on Skype or not? Yeah, yeah, totally, oh. totally. Because uh, your website says <laughs> ten. Not to charge, I'm oh, sure. because your website <laughs> says ten pounds per hour for healing sessions on Skype. Yeah, that's the that's the cost it would that's the cost to me as it oh, were because okay. obviously I'm not able to work and stuff that's that's if I'm raising funds to pay for me to go visit someone oh okay that's, that's good to know negation or uh wait or anybody well I'm just I'm, I'm sitting here more than willing and able and yeah I mean I'll, I'll, even, I'll even tell you right now I'll be more than willing to pay you the 10 pounds an hour to get rid of my phobia right now well, but just really, for the sake of interest, what what is the phobia you're talking about? It's going to seem really funny to you, especially considering I'm a pilot, but I've got a, a morbid fear of heights. Um, I really oh. cannot, um, like if I had to walk out on a... Um, I want a, a girder for a, you know an, an office build, building or something, I, I just cannot do it. Period. Right. Um, now, I can get an airplane, turn it upside down, and pull five or six Gs, but it's totally different for me being, you know, I just can't do anything. And in fact, I've even skydived, which I don't have a problem with. But anything like the Grand Canyon, I'm just, I can't even get close to the edge. I mean, to the point where my knees are wobbling and I'm just, I'm all over the place. It's irrational. Cool. I, I know that it, it's something that just will not... Um, will not let me let me function in some ways that I really would like to function in. So you know, so uh, right. yeah. Look, I mean, I, I'm just not understanding. Okay. So uh, um, anything else you mm -hmm. got for us, Keith? Before I move on, or no? Well, I mean, live life. If he wants to do this, I think this would be absolutely. Yeah, I think. All right. Yeah, I. I, 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 I go to um, Take the floor, <laughs> negation. <laughs> I mean, tell me, just, what would you like to do? Negation, take the floor, I'm going to the bathroom. Okay, man.
Okay. Um, so tell me what you would like to do, what I need to do, what 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 can we do to, to um, demonstrate this to everyone? You know, I mean, I've always come at come at situations that if someone can prove God to me, which I think this mm -hmm. would be a pretty strong <clears throat> indicator, um, yeah, right. and you can demonstrate that you have ability to cure people's suffering, this is absolutely um, astonishing. And I think it's extremely important that we would get this out to the masses. Okay. Um, let me see. Um, right. What we're looking for is we're looking for understanding what your beliefs are that lead to this response. Okay? okay. We're looking for what what we call lies the heart believes. So this is not your intellectual understanding, it's what you really think. It's what your emotional side of your mind thinks. Absolutely. And it has it has only learned by experience. So okay. it has a stack of experiences in there which lead it to believe that this is the truth. That being high is scary. Okay. So let me just, the first thing I need is a list of emotions. So when you're up there, think of maybe the last time you were up there or went near it, you said your knees wobbled. Uh, what would be the emotions that... Mm, the place? first... The first thing that comes to mind is panic. Um, I don't. I know that's not an emotion, but that that's what. It'll do. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. That's fine. Panic. Okay. Any others? Um, just uh, emotions would be um, fear. Absolutely. Um, just an irrational. Yeah. Complete. Complete disassociation. And another thing is more um, tunnel vision. I, I, I become very unaware of everything else around me. Right. Okay. That's that's possibly a measure of the in intensity of it, because it just pulls you in. Okay. Um, panic, fear, anything else? No. I mean, that's not pretty I, much good enough. Well, yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. So the prayer I'm going to pray, which you don't have to do it as a prayer, you can choose whether you want to or not. No. Hey, whatever's more is, effective. What's more, whatever's more effective. Okay. It doesn't, it doesn't offend me either way. I can. Because we could you. ask your mind to find. It on its own. We can we okay. can work at it ourselves. But right. um, I will pray. Um, Lord Jesus, I oh hang on, what's your real name? Am I allowed that or can I just use a Oh yeah, you can it's Scott. Just good Scott. enough, is it? Scott, well, okay. Right. It doesn't matter, you can use Scott. Doesn't really yeah. whatever. Uh, um, Lord Jesus, I ask you to help Scott relax and just be able to hear you clearly and to uh, be able to be inspired. Um, I ask you to help him ignore distractions and to simply be able to go on a journey through his own thoughts and feelings to understand why he's afraid of heights. So Lord, I pray for Scott that he may be aware of whatever you wish him to be aware of next. May he see, feel, hear or remember whatever you want him to next so we can understand his fear of heights. Am I supposed to be doing something? Well, just report anything you, you remember, maybe. Anything that... No, sorry, I'm not... There's mm -hmm. nothing really coming through at all. I mean, um, I... You know, again, it, it would be really helpful if this would go away. Um, mm -hmm. Just not really... Okay. See if see if any any experiences that are, like, representative of this come to mind that we can use as a kind of a um, put it yeah. on the table. I'm not really maybe I'm miss maybe I'm misunderstood or not understanding representative, what do you mean by that? Well we're looking for context that we can that, that can be discussed, something specific that can be discussed. So more of a causation, more of a causation, something that happened I guess when I was little or yeah, something if, like that. If 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 that it's obviously the the first time this happened. The question is, how did your brain get that in there? And so the first time this occurred is is the most important. So if if you can find that, then that's what we're looking for. 
Mm, I would say the first time this happened is when I was about 12 years old and we were um, touring Colorado with my family and there was, I don't remember, I think it was the Indian, Indian dwelling, the cliff dwellings and when we walked up to the edge um, I literally just froze and took two steps back and could not, you know, I, I couldn't even come, even with a railing there, I couldn't come up to the edge anymore. And what thought was going through your mind at that time? Do you have any recollection of that? Mm, the thought was just, uh, I mean, the only thing I can remember was, you know, again, just panic, get away, um, you know, just feeling, feeling like the whole world is kind of moving and getting, you know, unstable underneath me, that type of thing. Mm. Okay, let yourself, how do you feel about the idea of letting yourself feel that? I mean, it It doesn't bother me to feel it, especially when I'm sitting like I am now. Um, yeah. It's it's not un, it's definitely uncomfortable if I'm in a skyscraper or I'm in mm -hmm. you know some big open area place with hundreds of feet beneath me. It, it but okay. It, Go ahead. Let, let's try um, if if while you're feeling that I say the whole world is unstable. How true does that feel to you? Uh, rationally or rationally or at the it, time feeling feeling spiritually no, feeling, rationally. yeah okay yeah, yeah. At, at the time it's it's a literal it, 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 feels, I mean, it, it literally feels like if i take another step my footing's going to be unse you know unsecured enough to where i could slip and fall off the edge so one more step and I am going to fall. That kind of describes how you feel. Yeah, that sounds about okay. right. Okay. Even if, if I, I mm -hmm. yes. so, if I say this phrase, "I'm going to die," how true does that feel out of ten? Hmm. Uh, I don't. I don't know if I even get to that point. It, it. It's not a fear of death thing. It's actually a fear of falling thing. And I know that sounds. Right. Yeah. But, okay. yeah it, it's more. I don't think I even get to that point. I just get to the point that I'm going to fall off the edge of here. And I, I mean, I'm sure intuitively I know I die, but it's not. That's not the driving thing. The driving thing is the falling aspect of it. Yeah. So, so in any situation, the thought is falling, not dying. Um, and in this specific situation, it's one more step, and I'm going to fall. And Can I just ask, what does any of this have to do with God? Well, what I'm trying to do is identify the lies that he is believing, because when he encounters God, God will speak the truth, and the truth will eliminate the lie. That's ridiculously absurd. That's one of the most retarded things I've ever heard and in my he life. will not. Well, the, Come on, Josh. Now, the thing is, what's I, happened here, your problem. and you know, you know the you damage has been caused effect. by an experience. Your, your, okay. your particular brand of taking advantage of people who are emotionally unstable. And this is why I didn't want to do this your last. Because should be pulled in allowing this in the middle is a good idea. And lashed and mocked and made a fool of. Because well, you, don't, okay. you don't get to say that God is some entity and you're and you are ch oh. somehow channeling God and healing people through either your faith or their faith or oh, I do. Faith, in the, uh, faith in the supernatural in general. Don't I do. Life. I've got I people who <laughs> perceive. If, if I may. What? Mm -hmm. If I may. Yeah, DPR guy. Thank you. Um, the one question that I've invited people in the chat to ask Keith Oh, is this, yeah. and it's one that he will never answer. I don't know why he will never answer it. Uh, I have asked people to invite him to tell us what his educational qualifications are. I told and you I know that he will, I know that, you know, and okay, I've studied, on. I've studied prayer ministry to theopostic <coughs> advanced level two. What uh, possible qualifications needed. do you have to teach other people about their mental Psychological well, makeup. I told you this, okay? All, all you have to do is pray, Lord Jesus, what do you no, want to know? What are your qualifications? Minutes? You can do it. 
What yes, are sir. your qualifications? Well, okay, as an engineer, your qualifications, you get them by doing it. You get them through experience and being rewarded for actually doing it. Okay? Now, if you go out and you ask a psychologist or a psychiatrist how many people they have cured of their condition and understood exactly what caused it and how it was cured and the meticulous inner workings and the meticulous detail, then I would consider them qualified. Now, what I are your seen, qualifications I have for seen a, I've people. seen a paranoid schizophrenic, he a paranoid schizophrenia in 20 minutes. 19 minutes of that was them trying to work out why they had their own paranoid schizophrenia. I'm just listening and taking notes. And 30 seconds of that was God speaking to Keith, where are you engineer of? What are your qualifications? Software, software engineering. Engineering of what? Software engineering. It's oh, software. your... Engineering is about understanding how things work. It's simple. It's so about engineering and psychology are synonymous. And you think by having a degree in engineering, you have because the audacity and the right to indoctrinate or in, uh, tell people. I can tell people. The psychological ones? Are it's you being for a moment serious? I know what you claim to show. Um, Keith, let me put my excuse point. Excuse me. The let thing is, put my if you were faced with someone with multiple personality Shush, disorder, Keith, and they go to see a I'm doctor, they get 20 minutes. I'm not interested in your bullshit. I give them 10 years. I will tell you I'll my... I'll put my point. life where my money is. Wait, as, you're, not, as, you're not qualified to... to, to diagnose multiple personality, multiple personality disorder, especially if you display well, characteristics of schizophrenia yourself and yes. saying that God speaks to you or that you speak <sighs> to God. Those but people are to those, it. those are the people that, that need to go to a safe place with padded rooms and take Thorazine for the rest of their lives. That's, uh, I have a question. That's what I see when I, when I think of you, or what I... Can, what I, can, I, can, I, may, can I just I, briefly, I know I talk too much, but can I just briefly finish my point? DPR Jones, can we have civil discourse here? I Keith, do this sort of thing multiple times on blog TV. I say, without shame, that Keith is a dangerous, poisonous, nasty piece of work who claims to have information that he does not have and influences the lives of others in a most pernicious, nasty way. For Pretty someone like Keith precious, to claim that he has got insight that he quite clearly does not is not a risible aspect. The point. It the is point dangerous is, oh, and nasty insight. and evil aspect that you have, Keith, and do not try and deny it. You are a yes. nasty, evil piece of work, and I have no shame whatsoever in calling you out on that. I'm absolutely with DPR. Absolutely. Not, uh, no, 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 I see. So, so when you're faced what with someone who's hurting, what do you do? Discourse? We're talking about people that need to be alone. Yeah, that was a joke, by the way. On top of a mountain, beating on rocks for the rest of their lives. That's what. That's the kind of people that we're talking about. And yeah, making little guy, kids get more. How does right insulting your opponent make a scientific uh, theological uh, discourse? For time. He does not deserve <laughs> or audience. That's. The measure of this piece of shit that's speaking. Uh, uh, Matt, real quick, guys. Let, let me ask you a question. Oh, thank on the topic you. Of thank you. So, so I've spent my life helping the homeless and opening my ho home to people in need, and you give me that. You don't know anything about me. This is this is absolutely key. Hang on. Whoa, whoa, one second. One second. Do not dare say that about me. I know a lot about you, Keith. I have made complaints to the local authorities where you work. I know exactly which church, if it can be called such, that you purport to work for. I know exactly what poison that you are spreading to people. Do not tell me that I do not know anything about you. You are a nasty, evil piece of shit who has the audacity to think that he has the ability to tell other people what they should or should not do. Don't do not, for a moment, God doesn't do try and do No, oh, don't stop. And, and charge don't, 10 pounds for a try and do uh, this. healing. Don't try and blame it on God. You know. You know when damn have, well, Keith, that I on your TV shows, you encourage 
in a sick and most disgusting way for uh, young people to uh, tell you in all confidence it won't go any further. Sick, young, troubled people to tell them your secrets and you get off on it and don't tell me that you don't. You are a sick cunt, Keith. DPR, let me ask him a question. Just just one moment. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, Keith, I have a question for you. Did, did you say that that you um, care for someone with a mental disorder? Yes, I do. I okay, so I'm, I'm curious so. why you can do these uh, prayer sessions to help other people, but you have not helped that person. And it's not peer-reviewed um, in medical uh, journals. Hang on, hang on. Uh, well, the thing is, I do use the best practice that's out there. Um, so I, I've done the research and I've read the books and I use the best practice that's out there and the experts that I've consulted with and so on. We don't agree on everything, but oh, uh, I do follow those. Please stop bullshit. Um, what? No, seriously. Please, please, allow me this question. I know I talk too much. Please tell me, Keith, what experts have you engaged with that gives um, you the right well, to in there's Dr. To, Carl to, Lehman, uh, there's Dr. Jim Friesen, no, who's got I'm two so books on multiple personality disorder, and there's the Dr. Question. James Wilder. Right, Hold on. guys, you, can, I, can you, I jump you, in real quick? To all of these people? Wait a second, guys. Yeah. Um, Wait a second. Um, I'm going to close Texas some Canadian. people out. I got I got to make some room in Skype, so I'm closing a couple people out. Uh, right. Wittgenstein, Texas, I'll hook you Texas up. Matt, Matthew, a... I got to get rid of you too, so I got to bring some more people in. Thank you. Uh, Texas Canadian had a really good point. Um, if you're living with someone with mental disorder, why aren't you curing them? Yeah, yeah, I'll get to that. Um, well, no, get to that I, now, because I'm, I'm, I'm a little concerned. Sorry for that, but, yeah, but you, you, for you, you've been, wait, wait a second. You've been on with me for 20 minutes. Yeah. We accomplished, I didn't hear anything, I, I hate to put, you know, I don't want to be, get to that I was, point, yeah. cool. well, you um, said, you asked me I was, if I, I was interrupted, but I didn't ask God to tell you the truth yet, okay. <laughs> well, but what I'm saying is, is, I wouldn't have engaged in this if I would have known that well, God I didn't expect so to be interrupted by complete arse. Well, I, 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 I'm not I the one to do this, this in, in, in a one-on-one, -on -one. that's more, more a reasonable, I, I don't think. Again, Keith, I wasn't the one who did that, and I'll apologize if you want me to, but it wasn't me. Yeah. I'm saying that it, it's a little shocking okay. to, to find out that you've yeah. got a long-time relationship with someone who is diagnosed mentally ill yeah. and have not cured them. When you have a yeah, hundred... Yeah, curative. okay, I can explain it. It's perfectly reasonable. Okay. Please do. Yeah, explain real quick, and then we have somebody here to okay. ask this. If, or something, if you come across someone who's middle-aged, who, if you plot their happiness of their life, it suddenly took a downturn at the age of 18 because they were raped or something, and they've had one specific event in their life which has caused a problem, okay, the healing time for that one event might be two hours of analysis and 30 seconds of healing, okay? So that's two hours to work on one event. If you're dealing with a person who has had trauma for their entire life and you're looking at 1,000 traumatic events that you need to look at, which means that the overall trauma that they've experienced can be decomposed into over 1,000 different uh, aspects, with a thousand different experiences that have affected them in a thousand different ways, it takes a lot longer than two hours. It takes how long about have you four how long? Hello? Yes. How long have you lived okay, with this person? Work through a thousand issues. It takes four or five years. Okay. Uh, ten and years. How long? Now, and when how long you've done all the traumas, okay, yeah, when you've done all the traumas, what happens is that if you've got a, a personality that's, say, two years old when it was traumatized, it gets stuck at the age of two years old. And so it then needs the opportunity to grow up. And so what you have to do is reconstruct their entire childhood and their entire life from scratch. And you have to provide experiences for them to learn the lessons that you, you would have had when you were growing up, wow. but they never had. So you have to reparent completely from scratch. Uh, going this back sounds, to wait a second, Dave, this what sounds you? like bullshit psychotherapy, not a God intervention in curative means. So if what God is all, wait a second, if God is all powerful, you're yeah. telling me <laughs> I don't know. that it takes God to, it takes God five hours to cure something? No, it takes him 30 seconds. 
when you've got to the issue that you need care why, about, again, that, why are why, we not doing it all in one shot? Why would God need us to go in and do piece by piece? Does he not love us? Does he not care? Yes, Does he yes. not care about that individual? Because if he did, this, this as soon wait, 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 let me finish. Never soon, had wait, an wait a second. Healing. As soon as this individual asks for his healing and, yeah. and acknowledges that he's God, why would God yeah. not extend that curative love to them unless he's a vindictive God? I'm not no, getting that. Because, because it's about your choice and free will. The fact that negativity has the phobia is because his mind, at some level, because of so his experience, to me, chose uh, to be afraid. Deep, Negative, deep and Josh. He has the phobia. Can you explain that to me? Well, his phobia is the result of an experience he went through, and as a result of that experience, his mind decided that it was a good idea to be afraid of heights. So it's his choice. It may not be his intellectual choice or his conscious choice, but his mind made the decision based on experience that heights are to be afraid of. Now, God will not override his free will. Okay? So, in order for God to heal that, he has to do it through a conversation and another experience. So, he needs another experience which will overwrite the, the, the damaged experience. So, he's not so, you have to be healed by experience because that's how the world works. Please, so real God quick. Works that way. Maria Frost, and we got another uh, guest in here or another caller. So, so Maria the multiple Frost, personality sufferer needs over a thousand positive experiences to counteract the thousand negative experiences. And that takes quite a lot of time. And then, when you've done those, they then need to grow up. And the growing up, my friend started off age nine, and they're now at, uh, what was the measurement, 70% of their natural age. So they've gone from being 20% of their natural age to 70% of their natural age in 10 years. So we're about two years. Are you ever going to finish your fucking point? So this, is, this is also a hallmark of bullshit artists. Make a point, <coughs> answer a question, and then shut the fuck up. Or, you know, say something that's actually relevant to the conversation. You keep you on, you ask me a on and on and on. You ask me a question about why the person I'm looking after up, is, is not healed, and I'm trying to give you a detailed answer to that question in which you will be interested in all the details. Tell me. Tell me how, how what, what, where's their prescription for how long one item takes to be healed and what that item is. I want to see an extensive list of every possible fucking malady on the pl on the face of the planet, and I want well, you to give your expert opinion on how long God takes to heal those fucking maladies. It depends what the cause is. Oh, it depends on the cause. So what happens but I if... I show you one person getting healed of four things in 20 already, minutes. I already answered that question. I, mean, I don't want to go into a protracted discussion about the cause. I want to well, talk I, about... If, if I may to talk about the practicality of what you do. Now, what happens when somebody isn't healed? Is it that they're just not trying hard enough? Is that what it is? No, like, like some, uh, no Josh, he has a 100% curative rate. Remember, he has 100% curative um, Cure. success once on this. I'm still started, waiting for the voices, though. Yeah, once people have started hearing, and particularly women, once they've got the hang of it, I said. <clears throat> uh, I, we, I have I have two questions, if I may. Go ahead, and we gotta get our other that. special guest Firstly, in here. Just hopped in. So. Um, I, I think that one of the things that I find most interesting when I hear this sort of like nonsense is actually to to ask them to define what it is that God is. Give me, Keith, your definition of God. Well, in this case, in this situation... No, God, not in God, any case, in what generally, what are the no, qualities... Which are qualities I'm of God? I'm recording what people say they hear and feel, okay? I'm recording what they say without suggesting stuff. I try to suggest as little as possible. Okay? When they're going through their pain, they describe pits, they describe goblins, they describe clouds, they describe all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then when they emerge from their pain, they see a guy. And I say, well, what's he look like? He's smiling. So you're seeing a smiling, happy person. God is a person to be encountered. You're avoiding the question. smiling, happy, and calm. It's, it's vague. It's not going to answer. And it, Ans it, 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 answer the question, Keith. Then, if you talk to somebody who's fe if he's talking to someone who feels like there's no point in life, then he will say, "I made you for a purpose." 
for example. He'll say, right, right. What right. The interesting is, thing is, is what he says is the opposite. I've got my second question. Please, I've got my second question. Uh, seeing as Keith is not prepared to answer the first question, my second question is this. Um, what, where would you like me to uh, send my address, my details, so I can actually take legal action against you for being a dishonest paedophile? I, I am not joking on this. Give me the details. I will Why give you time. Say that. Because I've spent the last 12 years of my life helping victims of paedophiles, so I think that's quite rude of you. I don't give a fuck. I think that's hate them, so I think that's I'm telling you, give me the details, where do I send the writ? Well, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to be I so think you're a paedophile. I think you're yeah. dishonest. I think you are utterly evil. I think that you are doing a disservice. And I know exactly where you're from. Don't worry about that. I think you are disgusting. Disgusting person. Uh, and why would anyone who invites me to talk on this show allow you to treat me like that? It's an open Listen, forum. Listen, mate, your worldview, the universe tends to heat death, right? You saying anything is hypocritical to your worldview. Because there's no point. Nothing you say makes any difference to the outcome. You're all hypocrites in your worldview. And here you are attacking me for stuff. Why don't you try to why don't you try to work out your own inequity and then move on to somebody else's? I've got plenty of inequity. Well, why don't you work on that? You know, somebody might have an iota of respect for the things. Don't you that accuse you me of stuff like that. It's patently so ridiculous. And you're fucking bullshit, and you're actually libel and slander and stuff like that. I mean, you need to learn to stand by and allow that. Sue me. You, you were speaking over. Uh, we got a. Uh, we got. Hold on, hold on, very quick. We got, we got somebody else in here. A call because they email some questions for you, uh, Keith. Uh, John, you there? Come on, I'm saying Jesus is real. He will help you if you talk to him about your emotional pain. He is quite happy to talk to you if you give him something to talk about. He will speak to you. You have to do the work of of bearing your soul to him first. You guys are all talking about disorder, intellectual not won't debate you. Jesus room. won't debate you intellectually. He will help you. Does and I'm still you? waiting for that that help, help Keith. I'm still yes. sitting here waiting. Well, you are have no longer to afraid of heights, negation of fear. Yeah. Holy! Yeah. Oh, wait a second, Keith. I'm hearing something. Keith, Keith, I, I Keith, am Keith. hearing something. We have God here. I, I am. We have God here. Calm down. God. That only ta that only took ten seconds or five seconds actually. Yeah, you're, you're, that's the question. If you God did it, well well, thank it, you, Jehovah. Oh my! No, that's just my point. On a repeatable basis, if it was actually God speaking, then it would work. It is God. That's God. It speak. is God speaking. Okay, well, so well, go out and well, test it. If it works, then oh, fine. I believe that, but I don't believe it because I don't think it was God. Okay, How do you know? I'm saying wait, 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 wait. How do you know? If this is God, ah. yet. Because God is a person and he's someone you can get to know. You get to know his sense of humor. God's here. You well, you he has a sense of humor. Give us his address. The, who doesn't believe in the character of the person that's speaking with that silly voice is a piss taker. I can tell the character of who I'm talking to. And having spoken with God and heard him talk to people almost every day for 10 years, you get to know his character. God, what's his uh, background? He tells jokes, for God. God, what's his background? How do you know him? You know Keith? Huh? Um, Keith is a, a, a very honorable gentleman, and I speak to his clients <laughs> regularly, on a regular basis. Oh, and he is right, I am a piss taker. I do urinate from time to time. But just for the pleasure of it, I don't really need you. I'm God, after all. Keith? Mm-hmm. You don't believe that's God? Of course not. Well, why not? Why? How do you know? Because he would only speak when what he has to say will change someone and help someone. And help me. Within Can a I help you negation of the... Well, let's see. Ask negation. Negation. God just asked you. Did he help you? Negation? He's probably jumping out the chair right now. I don't know. No, he's here. Exactly. I, I don't have any place high enough right here to go, you know, to go look, especially, you know. Well, just to say, what happens with me is that 
when I ask the Lord what the truth is, he has to wait until my intellectual mind is distracted and is out of the picture. So he tends to speak to me when I'm washing up or something like that, which is a lot of the time, actually. So so much about God. Because you have to have an experience which changes your the previous experience. It has to wait, be wait, wait, with your previous experience. Wait, wait a second, Keith. That's I'm not perfect. understanding. We've got an all-powerful being, and my mind is strong enough to block him? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, of course. What? He won't override your free will. Well, God's here. God. What do you got to say? He won't override your free will. Um, I... No, that is absolutely it would true. Be rude. I will not override anybody's free will. Wow. Yeah. Except you know but when, uh, except you do it when a child doesn't want to get murdered, or a or fifteen year old doesn't want to fucking crash head on into the car that they're about to crash onto. Uh, everything else in that, you know, dealing with that free will, God, you know, you can intervene elsewhere. See, the other That's thing, the, the other thing is, the other thing is, is that that memory is in there with him up a cliff. Okay, that memory is in there, and whenever he climbs a, a girder or whatever, his brain goes to that memory to find mm. out the emotional experience. So the cure has to, in some way, correct that memory. And this is why, if, if someone has a traumatic experience and their parents come over and comfort them, then the, the lasting impact of that memory is the parent's comfort, not the trauma, which is why parenting makes such a difference. Yeah, so why, why they need God then? Why are they right. got there, parents? So, but this tells us that this means that he can go back to that memory okay. where he's on the cliff and okay. is afraid of heights, and he can carry on processing it. Okay. And he can add further experiences and thoughts to that. God. And he exactly. also adds his, his adult experience to it as well. The exact same way a psychiatrist or psychologist would have me Correct. do. There is no Correct. God intervening Correct. in this, man. I'm Correct. still waiting. It's only a simple case. Uh, Negation. God's okay, right here. I'm a complicated about. case, okay? A complicated case is where the trauma is too difficult to encounter when you're conscious. So God says, I will reveal the trauma and the memories in a series of dreams, and I want you to be available when the person wakes up from those dreams in order to take notes of the poignant past. The dreams will take two weeks. I won't tell you how many dreams there are. Oh, the so the process of healing Hold on, God, God wanted to get into it, guys. It's fascinating to me that you could have such an amazing delusion and build this entire construction out of absolutely nothing and then speak for hours at a time about um, nonsense. Really, well, it amazes me. There's I mean, over 50,000 people who have been trained in the same techniques as I by the way. It's fascinating to me. God? Have any of you ever had dreams before? Yes. That was me. Obviously that was me. What the hell did you think? It was you in your subconscious? Negation, I have every interest in taking away your fear of heights. I want you to go to heaven so that you can worship me, and heaven is high. I know, and I'm scared. I'd like to ask God a question, if I may. And the other thing, the other thing, uh, God, real quick, hold on, DPR. Yeah, DPR. After the, uh, one thing, one thing, um, God, could you make um, the dreams that you send me to cure this wet dreams, please? Because I miss those. <laughs> I'd like to ask God a question. Is it possible uh, for you, God, to imbue into uh, a half wet or fuck wet? Oh, an, okay, um, fellow human being, such as Keith. Is it possible for you to imbue, in, to you, imbue into him um, some sort of like delusion that he thought he actually believed in what you are, but you were just having a fucking giggle, and Keith was looking foolish? Uh, I think what you're you doing. I think Keith is... <laughs> you play fast and loose with people's lives. There's people who are desperately hurting out there who Shut have the no fuck other... up, Keith. I'm listening to the word he's of right. God. Yeah, he's right. Um, there are people who do need a lot of help, DPR, and I don't appreciate you making light of this. Um, uh, and also, I would appreciate it if you wouldn't let him know that I'm fucking around with him. Uh... Because it's, it's fucking fun. You should see what this guy does at 2 in the morning. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh god, you're so funny sometimes. Uh, but, 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 don't get me wrong. Uh, he, he, uh, he helps uh, lots of people 
really, he, he really helps people. <laughs> I'm sorry. Keep helping people, Keith. You know how I look at it seriously, Keith. This is what we do as yep. skeptics. So this is how we do. Fence, the nice open. No. We're willing to discuss. We're well, yeah, but when you come up with this, of view. You, but when you come but up with this nonsense, I'm mean, like, when you come up with this Anyone kind of nonsense. Anyone who comes on this show, it's got to be absolutely Keith, crazy. Keith, 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 to be treated I'm, like this. Come on, listen to yourself, Keith. Thanks You're for coming out. Listen to yourself. This is the real world, man. We don't care about your little fucking soft tones and your run-on sentences and your fucking meaningless drivel. We don't give a shit. No, I totally agree. I'm like, uh, Keith, man, yeah, we bring people in here that might be modern Christians that might be questioning their faith. Yeah, that's cool. That's what we do. But boil down to it, dude, you, it's nonsense. You didn't answer any of the friggin' questions. It's total absurd. The nonsense. I, I just can't fucking fathom how a person could be, would believe this shit that you're stating. I just can't. And I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. We try to do a show here where we're like this, but come on, man. We gave you your voice, but you know what? I'm going to bring people on here that want to come in and join the call too, man. I give you a lot of time tonight, you know, and you know what? It's nonsense, man. It's the nonsense the world doesn't need. We don't need it. You know, you do this as Christian propaganda because you know Jesus is the prophet, P-R-O-F-I-T, prophet, and you do it to make 10 pounds per hour on Skype calls for healing. And you say you have a success rate of 100%? This is nonsense. It's not peer-reviewed in any kind of medical journal. End of story, man. If you're that good... Go to a fucking medical scientist or anybody and just get a peer reviewed if you're that fucking good. It's never and, gonna happen. Right, and, and just let me be <clears throat> God, and, and just let me be clear. I was absolutely sincere. I do have that phobia. And I absolutely for what, the twenty minutes, half hour, whatever it was that we let him we uh, gave do him whatever he did to me. We gave him the five floor and we, we gave, come on, man. Don't so say we're bad when people. it gets when it gets to the point that we're literally trying to give him every opportunity, mm -hmm. and when he asked me if there's nothing, or he asked me if something's going on, and I'm like, nothing's going on, man. I mean, we can re we definitely rewind the tape and look what happened. I, all I want is some proof. Now, if you're going to sit here and ramble this shit on and then start backpedaling and start pulling the same shit, mm. especially when we're coming to the realization that... You know, through DPR and through Josh, that he is actually harming people. You know, I'm sorry. I think we need to expose that. It's incoherent. So his his explanations are incoherent. To, I need to explain They're, my position. Um, and I, I will repeat it. So I won't um, detract from it. Mm -hmm. I think that he is a um, hideous, nasty piece of shit. I do think that he is probably a I, pedophile, and I am more than willing. Uh, just send me a message, Keith. I will give you my address, my details, so that you can actually take a libel action against me. Absolutely. I very much doubt that he will, he won't. because I maintain that he is an evil, duplicitous, nasty piece of shit who actually, in, in the most pernicious way, um, seeks to interfere with people's lives. He has no qualifications. Okay, he says he's got a degree in engineering, and that means blah blah blah. Uh, it was software engineering, but by the way. That, yeah, but <laughs> how does that? How does that in any way um, deal with um, what he tends to do on his blog TV channel, which is to actually give guidance? And his Skype calls. His Skype calls. He's probably getting guidance. No, oh, he geez. has no qualifications to do so. And when he does so, he is actually doing something very, very bad. Sue me, Keith. I will send you my details so that you can actually uh, issue the lawsuit if you wish to do so. But I know that you won't because I know much more about you than you know about me. So uh, God and then Josh and then Negation will close the show up. Actually, uh, he has quite a few qualifications. First and foremost is his most ex excellent whiny British accent, which I spent two hours 
on the sixth day of creation. Two hours perfecting that British accent. <laughs> Is this what people ought to expect when they come on the skeptic face show? <laughs> Do you realize how long it took me to perfect that accent? <laughs> DPR, come on. You have to appreciate a Mona Lisa when you see it. I do, and I, I, I kneel before you, and I kiss your ring. This is the, this is the I, I prefer thing. you to kiss my ass, but okay. Josh. <laughs> This is exactly the type of thing that that we need to to drag against the light. Absolutely, everybody needs to see this stuff. Absolutely, and, and it needs to be explained to people in a way that they really understand. If you've got if you've got people that are passionately opposed to these kind of ideologies and identify them as dangerous and harmful uh, because they are, mm -hmm. you got if you've got people that are loud about it and people that have said other things that you approve of or other things that make sense. This stuff is going to catch on. So people drag douchebags like this into the light. I'm looking this guy up. He's given me fantastic in inspiration for a video. I'm looking this guy up, and I'm going to fuck him thoroughly uh, in the public square. So, and you do the same. Do it. Absolutely, Make yeah. Sure that people know about it. That, these, these are the kind of people that need to be identified. No, absolutely. This will video. This video will be up in a couple of days, and uh, I might actually do an excerpt of him calling in on a separate video. So if you guys want to check it out, uh, yeah, get around me because this is what we do. I mean, like we don't mind bringing modern Christians in here to question faith. We like to accept people. We have plenty of people that deconverted from Christianity that came on the show plenty of times, and that's what the show is about. But when we get somebody like him in here, uh, yeah, free reign, man. Go ahead, rip them apart. I don't give a shit, you know, because he deserves it because he does more harm and good in society or his society wherever fuck he lives in the uk it, it, that's what it's about man i mean like yeah we might say oh yeah we'll, we'll bring anybody in christians whatever well yeah if you want to question but if you're gonna act on the nonsense this guy had nah man we're, we're gonna rip you apart i'm sorry man i'm sorry we're gonna have an opposing view to your argument or your claims i'm sorry we're gonna do it so uh uh anybody else have anything to say uh -huh. yeah, I'm, I'm also very offended that he referred to me as a piss taker. I've been known to leave piss, but I never take it anywhere. And, and just to be... <laughs> and God's joke is so fucking cool. I, I just wonder, uh, if I may, one last question. I just wonder what um, <laughs> the good Lord thinks about me uh, and my attempts to... Yeah, that's a good question. The spread yeah. messages about... Um, and I don't actually believe him. Um, is, that a, is that an okay question? <laughs> DPR, uh, you don't need to uh, talk to me about that. <laughs> We're going to have plenty of time to talk about it. And, uh, <clears throat> let me look at my book here. On February 30th, no, I'm sorry, that's not it. February 28th, 2013, when you will be hit by a bus. What? And, yeah. And I'm, 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 I'm shitting myself now. I don't know what to do. You're going to send the universe into a spiral. And Dark Matter is going to be driving. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, we're not going to have much time to talk, if you know what I mean, DPR. Not much time at all. <laughs> all right, well, right. there we go. Uh, isn't that a classic example yeah. of how um, instilling fear into people will actually make them believe in? <laughs> and and to be clear, what I was trying to accomplish quick, there, guys, minute. is is that I want to do exactly what Josh was saying. Is I think that this needs to be drawn out into the light. Yeah, it needs to be exposed and. Just like James James Randi, I'm going to participate fully. Mm -hmm. I'm going to allow him <laughs> to do whatever he wants to do to me, and then when it doesn't work, I'm going to make him atone for it. Now, just to be clear, I'm actually in a conversation, a text conversation with Keith this second. He just texted me back asking me how how I feel about you know having God speak to me. I'm going to allow him to keep doing this as long as he can, because the longer that he keeps doing this, and I'm pretty sure now, I'm not going to say that I 
definitively know God is not going to talk to me. He might, which would be great. God's here, negation. What, what's wrong with you? I'm sorry, I'm Jeez, sorry. Don't, don't use his God. name in vain. I, I, I need whatever. to be clear. <laughs> Keith's God, not the real God. Okay. Anyway, Keith's God talks to me. I will come back and report it. I will absolutely be Sorry. on my knees telling you people just how amazing it is that I'm not scared of my, you know, my fear of heights anymore. Um, but I think there's value in exposing him on both sides, making him look like you guys did, um, you know, DPR and Josh both ripping him apart. And on the <laughs> other end, show me if you if you really believe you can do this, do it to me. If you can do it to me, let's go. Not to say that even if it did change me that that would be definitive evidence, but damn sure would leave some credence to what he's saying. Because I know how I think. And even if it did cure me and I heard voices, I'm pretty sure I might go talk to somebody at that point because it would scare the piss out of me. Yeah. To tell you the truth. Yeah, well I would talk to somebody. I would call a fucking drink and say, I need to get on anti-psychotic medication because I'm hearing shit. <laughs> exactly. Gosh, that's exactly what I'm saying. But who knows? It mm. might work. So I'm going to let him try. And I'll keep playing his little game, and I'll keep freaking pulling him out. But again, I'm not going to completely, you know, tell him that he's wrong. I just want to keep exposing him. And mm. every time that he comes back and hits me with something, and I can show that it doesn't work, hopefully, maybe one person will go, you know what, the guy's full of shit. Mm. Uh, real, real quick, guys, we got to end the show in a minute here. But uh, DPR go first, and I'm going to do Marty and Frost, and then uh, Dark Matter 2525. Go ahead, real quick. Uh, very quickly, um, <clears throat> if there were such a thing as God, I imagine it would actually be Dark Matter 2525, and <laughs> I would willingly kneel before his ring. Other uh, uh, gods that have been proposed to throughout history? No, not that interested. Dark Matter's. Got me. He's totally. A, yeah, he's a, he's a good uh, guy. Uh, Josh? I would just say, trust yourselves. Yeah. Trust yourselves. Trust your own abilities. Trust your mind. You're usually right, even when you're slightly wrong. Uh, find your own answers. Learn the things for yourselves. Be an empiricist. Think about things deeply. That's all I got. No, I totally agree. Very well said. Uh, God? Um... This is quite the little atheist powwow. You guys got to go and enjoy it while it lasts. Well, Jeffrey, all gonna fucking burn. Well, Jeffrey told me you were an atheist, so I, I don't know. You got to talk to Jeffrey about that shit. I mean, the, the, the oh. other atheists. Uh, you, 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 you guys. Yeah, it, it's a bitch thinking, isn't it? Yeah, isn't it? What's a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! He's uh, playing Super Mario Kart. Uh, shit. Uh, one thing I want to end with real quick here, if I can find it, is uh, this real quick. I want to close with this statement by Christopher Hitchens: "Take the trust of thinking for yourself. Much more happiness, truth, beauty, and wisdom will come your way." Yeah, tell that to God. But I, I want to end the show here. Guys, thanks for your continuous support. I'm like, we're getting more and more people every week, and I appreciate all your support and Dark Matter, Marine Frost, and, and DPR for coming on. Uh, actually, uh, often, I do appreciate everybody's support. Uh, guys, we wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for everybody here who contributed to the show. So, guys, thank you very much. Please subscribe up top is our link. It's at our new Skeptic Fence channel. And please subscribe to this channel. And please, uh, you got Magic Sandwich Show uh, tomorrow or no? DPR? No, it's next week, I think. Oops. Yes. Uh, uh, next week. It's next week, okay. So make sure you guys, uh, if you go on the Skeptic Fence channel, you'll see the link to uh, the Magic Sandwich Show, which I'm sure everybody is aware of. So I'm just putting it out there for a few people that may may not know. And Trolling With Logic is tomorrow. Uh, their guest is David Silverman. If you go again on the Skeptic Fence channel on YouTube, up top in the title bar, you could go to the Trolling With Logic show and get all the links for tomorrow because David Silverman will be on their show tomorrow. And I will be attending. Uh, maybe I'll be a co-host. I don't know. I got to talk to Zulu. I don't know. But it'll be a fun time, guys. So go check that out. Support all the channels. Support all the shows that come out online, and just uh, just you know enjoy it, man. You know, and we'll rip people apart like this Keith guy. 
you know, we try to have some kind of civil discourse here, and we'll bring people on like we have that have been converted from Christianity, and people that are still Christians we bring on the show. And we, we don't attack them. If they got questions, we'll answer them. But we gave this guy tonight the benefit of the doubt, and you know what? He ran with nonsense, and you know what? We're going to call that the nonsense, and that's what we did tonight. So nobody be mad about what we did. I think we did the right thing against this guy because this is what we have to combat in societies. We have to do this because, and the secular broadcasting forum, thank you, Angry. Uh, go check that out, and DPR, you should be a part of that channel, too. Uh, that link right there, Angry uh, Lomble, just uh, post it. But, um, guys, thank you very much. Great show. Uh, thanks to our uh, Skeptic of the Week, um, uh, Winston, whatever. I, I can't pronounce his name, though. You want to? Winstonism. There you go, Winstonism. And I'll post his links in the description box when this video Winston, comes out. Whatever, fucking Skeptic of the Week. Oh, yeah. God. I can never pronounce some names sometimes. I, I feel like embarrassed, but it's okay. It's, it happens. But uh, everybody, thank you very much. And you guys stay around for a couple minutes.